Today we're here with Shirley Russell. Shirley has a master's degree in psychiatric nursing. She also has 24 years experience in working in hospital-based psychiatric settings and chemical dependency treatment centers, as well as in home-based counseling work with individuals and families. And for the past six years, Shirley's been working at Midcoast Hospital in Brunswick, Maine in their Outpatient Addiction Resource Center. Shirley, can you help us understand what the treatment options are for someone who has an opiate dependence problem? Well, again, in my own experience of working at Addiction Resource Center, um, when clients come in for, for treatment that are opiate, uh, opioid dependent, what's really drawing them in is knowing about Suboxone, which is an anti-craving medication for opioid dependency. Um, people are taking Suboxone on the street because people are being prescribed Suboxone and, and they're diverting it or sharing it, which is illegal and they shouldn't be doing, but you know, there also is a, a benefit to that because people who try Suboxone on the street, they realize that it um, takes away their cravings, takes away their withdrawals, and they feel normal. It, um, Suboxone is a medication that you don't um, have the euphoria with if, if you have an opiate um, dependency. So once they figure that out, that there is something that can help them, they want to get on it legally, they'll, they'll come, it's a draw, and they'll come into treatment to those centers that provide it. So um, that is really what's drawing um, people into treatment. And um, anti-craving medication, or what we call MAT, medication-assisted treatment, um, which really is available for a lot of different substance dependencies, but for, um, I'll get into it a little later about the ones that are available for opiate dependency. So that's a draw of what gets people into treatment and wanting that relief, wanting that physiological relief and that mental relief from cravings. And then we get into the, the other treatment that we offer, which is the counseling part. Um, the studies show that uh, combining medication-assisted treatment with counseling has the best outcomes for recovery. So um, just having, just using Suboxone on the street without the counseling does not have good outcomes. <clears throat> You're still hanging around with all the people who are using multiple um, different drugs and availability of that. The thinking patterns and behaviors are still the same. The, um, that you really need to change your thinking, um, identify the difference between addictive thinking and recovery thinking. You know, addictive thinking is full of um, denial, um, rationalization, real self-centeredness, you need your drug every day and that's your main priority. And, um, you know, recovery thinking really uh, counters that with changing really a lifestyle and a mindset, as well as, you know, the, the behaviors that are driving you to use your substance, really examining those, developing a skill set of how to live without um, substance use and get your needs met, very legitimate needs that people have that they've been turning maybe to drugs to meet. Um, so those, all the counseling that involves that kind of support and skill teaching and, and personal growth and examination needs to occur in conjunction with the medication-assisted treatment. Now, people wouldn't come in for that counseling if they're in withdrawal. I mean, you're too uncomfortable. You can't sit in a class and pay attention, sit in a, a, a three-hour intensive outpatient group and attend when you're that uncomfortable in, in withdrawal. So getting people through the door is starting them on an anti-craving medication as early as we can so that they can and, and will stay in treatment. And then um, also connecting them with sober community supports like you know 12-step recovery programs um, like A. Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous in the community. So that's really um, sort of a bigger picture of the treatment. And then there's, there's many different um, levels of intensity depending on the person's presentation of how serious their addiction is. Um, they may need to go to a de detoxification hospital center to um, deal with their withdrawal. That it's, it's, they can't, most people have stopped tried to stop using on their own many times before they come for treatment and been unsuccessful. But um, so going into a, a detox center um, for like a day or two, a hospitalization, they can withdraw you from your medication, give um, some comfort measures for a lot of the withdrawal symptoms, and also um, can start prescriptions of 
um, medications such as Suboxone. And um, so when they're discharged, they, they're they feeling okay. They're feeling like they're, they're able to function physically and mentally. And then they're often transferred from that treatment right into uh, a treatment center like ours where we will do, be doing providing the counseling and the, um, the medication-assisted treatment maintenance at that point. Um, so you can go in at that level. You can have outpatient services like we provide intensive outpatient groups um, three hours a day or three to five days a week and that might go on for uh, four to six weeks and then you drop back to one group a week one outpatient group and then um, ultimately we're continuing to prescribe um, the anti-craving medication over much longer periods of time some people do not do well at that level they they might live in environments where there's a lot of drug activity going on and so they need more uh, supervised environments like a residential setting. So clients that don't succeed at our level of outpatient level of care will be referred to a residential program where there's not availability of drugs or alcohol when they go home. Um, they're in a much more supervised environment. And if they can get 30 days or more of sobriety under their belt there, they come back into the treatment outpatient and that level of support and can go back into the community. So Shirley, what is the goal of treatment? Is the goal of treatment to be off, completely off a medication? Can you help us understand yeah. that? Well, um, there are different models of treatment. There's, you know, the total abstinence model where um, that usually that is the goal of, of not using any, any mind-altering substances whatsoever. And then there's another, another model. It is called harm reduction which is you're trying to reduce the harm that people are causing by their substance use. But, um, you know, medication-assisted treatment, the, the, the medications that you become dependent on as well, like Suboxone and Methadone, are, are habit-forming, and you do get dependent on those as well. But we're looking at the harm that that causes versus the harm that um, illegal street uses of those medications cause, intravenous drug use of opiates, um, uh, just the whole lifestyle that goes along with that, with the loss of trust in your family and, and often stealing to get the money to buy drugs on the street, all of, all of this dysfunction that that cause, causes, you know, the arrest, the incarceration, versus being prescribed a, a legal medication with supervision and also being counseled about all the behaviors that you may have developed as part of your addiction, you know, the dishonesty, the... the um, breaking the law, um, losing, you know, lying to your family and whatnot. So um, we're really looking at, we do practice um, a measure of both. And when you're on Suboxone at our agency, you are not allowed to use any other medications, or any other <coughs> illegal substances, or you, were, you will be discharged from the program. And since that's helping people so much to be on the Suboxone, they're willing to give up their 20, 30 year use of smoking pot every single day or, or drinking or other substance abuse because this is helping them so much. So we're really looking at abstinence from any other substances and believe that that's going to, you know, re-trigger, you know, the reward center, <coughs> excuse me, of their brain that I talked about earlier to maybe put them more at risk to pick up illicit opiates. And you mentioned Midcoast Addiction Resource Center, and one of the things that, one of the reasons it brought us to you is we had read about some of the successes that Midcoast had had with folks' recovery. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe the factors that you think contributed to your really good success at Midcoast? One of the things that I think the most important was is that we do provide medication-assisted treatment now, where um, in prior years we did not. That was started for opiate dependency back in uh, 2007 when I first started there, um, and so the volume of treat the volume of clients coming for treatment and their retention in treatment, their staying in treatment went up dramatically because of the importance of people being comfortable physically and mentally to be able to receive the treatment. And in addition to that, um, there's been efforts made for um, rapid access to treatment. Um, it's known that once a person with an addiction decides 
um, to have to come for treatment, it could there's usually a lot of ambivalence involved in that decision, a lot of fear of giving up the substance they've become so dependent on. So when they call and inquire about coming in for treatment, it's very important to have that available to them very quickly, or or they're likely to change their mind and um, go back to their, their usual patterns. So we've we've. Um, made a lot of efforts to get people into treatment very quickly. Great. Thank, thank you. This was really helpful to better understand the treatment options. And it sounds like best practice is a combination of medication-assisted treatment and counseling, as well as social supports and, and, and community support. When we come back, we'd love to hear from you about resources. Where can people go for help? What if they live in northern Maine, far away from Midcoast Addiction Resource Center? And what's the role of family, significant other, and communities in promoting recovery? <laughs>